Nancy Dunn was raised in what looked like the typical American family. I live in California. My father worked for the aerospace industry. My mother worked for a doctor. And so, you know, on the outside, everything looked just normal, but nobody really knew what was going on behind closed doors. My father was actually a Satanist high priest, so he um, did all kinds of evil things. He sexually assaulted me. He took me to satanic rituals. My father actually used me as a baby breeder, which means I was impregnated to carry a child so that the Satanists would have a baby to sacrifice to the devil in their satanic rituals. As Soon as I was able to have a baby, I was pregnant. The abuse in Nancy's home continued throughout her adolescence. Her babies were delivered by midwives and there was no record of their births. By her late teens, Nancy knew she had lost 10 children to satanic sacrifice. And so if I were out of school for weeks or months on end, my parents could call the school and there was no big deal. There was never an investigation. However, back when she was eight years old, an elderly neighbor befriended Nancy and invited her to church. My parents let me go because they were doing a Olympic type event where kids were competing and playing. So she took me to that meeting and it was really awesome to me because at eight years old, uh, one of the ladies there preached the gospel to me. She shared with me who Jesus was. And that very day, in that very moment, I knew that was the truth. And I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. At age 18, she married the first man that came along to escape her abusive upbringing. When her marriage fell apart one year later, she began to lead a promiscuous lifestyle. But I became pregnant at 21 years old and I was alone. So a friend offered me a solution and I had an abortion. After the abortion, the guilt and shame of her decision and a flood of traumatic childhood memories sent Nancy running back to the church. I really loved God in my heart, but I didn't really know how to have that walk with Him. So I joined a church. I began to read the Word of God. I began to really pursue a relationship with my Heavenly Father. Um, as I began to try to walk that out, there were all these stumbling blocks at times. It felt like there was a wall or a ceiling between God and I. There was a lot of fear in my life, a lot of anxiety in my life. My self-esteem was just nothing. I always felt that I was just lower than the dirt. And I couldn't really ever understand why God would love me or what His love could do for me. Nancy sought Christian counseling. Her counselor discovered that she was suffering from dissociative identity disorder, meaning she was having flashbacks so severe that she had split into several personalities in order to cope with the trauma. The memories were compartmentalized. And so God began to bring them to me one at a time. You know, the Holy Spirit will never give us more than we can handle. So God really directed that and He began to help me process through each memory. And I just began to press into God for my deliverance. And I just began to cry out to God with all I had all the time for my freedom. And it was a process of about a year and a half that I was in counseling, working with this therapist. And I remember visiting a church on Valentine's Day. They were preparing the elements for communion. And I was getting a little nervous on side because in the natural, I was forced to drink human blood in the satanic rituals. So the blood seems so crazy to me. But I heard the Lord speak to me. And he said, if you will drink of my blood and eat of my body, I will heal you from everything the enemy has done to you. So I took communion and everything changed and I became one whole person. God did it in a moment through communion. After taking communion, the Lord also led Nancy through a process of forgiving her father. The next time she saw him, he was on his deathbed. He was in ICU. They didn't think he could speak to me. And yet he sat up in the bed. He sat up in the bed and he repented to me. Well, I just lost it. I, I just totally lost it. 
And I just looked at my father and I said, you know, Dad, all I want to know is if you know Jesus. And he said, he looked at me and smiled, and he said that he had just said the sinner's prayer with a neighbor who was a pastor. And I just had tears flowing down my face, and I said, um, the only thing I want is how I need to hear you say it. And so my father said the sinner's prayer with me. And about 60 seconds later, he died and he went to heaven. Today, Nancy is an advocate for abused and neglected children in the court system. She has also helped start orphanages in five different nations and travels the world to share her story and minister deliverance. I'm free. I feel so free. I feel so light. I feel so happy and God's allowing me to be a part of setting other people free. You know, I just want to say there's power in the blood of Jesus, and the blood has never lost its power, and it will never lose its power. Jesus didn't come and shed His blood so we'd remain in captivity. He came and shed His blood that we would be free, and I'm telling you, God wants us free.